say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in the farmer's kitchen. Maters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn, kids in the barnyard chasing Grandpa's chicken. chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in the farmer's kitchen. Help you grow your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet, gonna educate your palate. Right here in Farmer's Kitchen, in town Farmer's Country Kitchen. We're gonna cook something good now. Hello and welcome to the Farmer's Kitchen. We're the farmers, and this is our kitchen. That's right. Now, when we bring you a show, like we do every week, it's us cooking dinner. And we're starving. And our daughter filming it, mm -hmm. and then editing it, and putting it out. That's right. This is real. So, how do we determine what we're going to have for dinner? You dig around. The we freezers. Dig. We right. dig. Yeah. This week, we went freezer diving. Yes, we did. Some people do dumpster diving. We do freezer <laughs> diving. So, we went to look and see what we have. Now, we have a lot of freezers because we do a lot of hunting and farming and fishing. Right. So Keep them separate. I am organized, kind of organized. Most brilliant thing you've ever done. Not only that, you wrote down what was in each That's freezer. Right. That's right. It's amazing we can go to freezer to freezer and find out yeah. what's what. Now when you hunt and fish a lot, when you have deer, when you raise your animals, or if you've got a pig or a cow or whatsoever, you have to have a lot of freezer space. Right. Now that being said, sometimes you need to clean the freezer out mm -hmm. when something else is getting ready to go in. We do. So, what do we find? We found some ground pork from your little buddy. That's right. We found some deer meat. I've got a eye of round. That's delicious. I've got an inner tenderloin and, and some unlabeled deer steaks. Mm -hmm. What are we gonna do with all this? Are you making all this? Not all of it. Okay. So let's look at our ingredients. You got a lot of stuff out. I got a lot of stuff yes, out. Yes, you do. So what do you think we're possibly gonna fix here? What are you making? One thing that I don't think we've made on the show is succotash. We have not. Do you know the history of succotash? I do not. There's a man named John Succo, S-U-C-C-O. His mother's name, her nickname was Tash. Really? She would go making, no, I'm lying. <laughs> I was like, what the heck? <laughs> it's not the truth. But, but it's actually Algonquin up in the northeast part of the country. Okay. When the pilgrims came here. Are you being honest? No, be, that's for real this time. Okay. That's probably what they were served during the first Thanksgiving. Okay. It was a mixed vegetable thing. Succotash and Algonquin mean something roughly to broken corn kernels. So we were recently down south and a lot of folks are making succotash. Also dirty rice. I don't think we made dirty rice. We have not. Now if you look up the history of dirty rice, a lot of American recipes that are kind of popular have pulled from other cultures, other areas, so on and so forth. The origins of dirty rice are from very poor people who took meats that are kind of left over, mm -hmm. undesirable from other folks, and turned it into a staple with rice. And it could be a side or it could be the main dish, however you want to do that. There's a lot of ways you can do your dirty rice. You can put chicken livers, chicken gizzards. Mm -hmm. You can use tongues, snouts. Yum. So. Not too long ago, we did chicken fried steak. Mm -hmm. Now there's country fried and there's chicken fried. Tonight we're gonna do chicken fried. We got flour and we're gonna make a white gravy. Yummy. Delicious. Now there's chicken fried steak, mm -hmm. chicken fried venison. The first time I had it, Freddie's mom, Shirley, made it years and years ago. So it was good. It was amazing. Yeah. We got lots of stuff to do here, so I guess we best get busy. And let's go ahead and Get the lima. Take those lima beans, and that's probably what a cup and a half yeah, lima beans, say. something, something like that, for on down the road. Now, for what we're doing now, if you'll cut me up uh, most of that onion, all right, I will cut some green pepper and some celery for our trinity. Now, there are a million different ways to do this, and a billion recipes on how to make dirty rice. If this is not your grandmother's recipe, doesn't mean we're wrong. It's just the way we make it. A lot of people, when you do a regional recipe, they're really proud of their, of their recipes, and they want to let you know they're proud. 
Now those who are watching, I'm anticipating that some of you are going to think, what is that cool knife he's using? What's the one-arm knife? It's a Ulu. And these have been around for a long time. You see the Northwest Native Americans and folks way on up into Canada were using mm -hmm. this years ago. Let's go ahead and put some butter in there. All right. Now again, the meat choice is up to you in your dirty rice. Mm -hmm. How do you want to dirty it up? It's up to you. How many onions do you want? A handful? No, you can use white rice. You can use brown rice. Whatever you got available. You know, we like to travel. And everywhere we go, we like to sample other folks cooking and different things. Sometimes you just forget about things. Yeah. We haven't made this for years. So Nikki used about a half of an onion over here. And I used about a half a green pepper, bell pepper. It's a pretty good way to start just about any recipe. Always smells good. Doesn't it though? Yeah. We've got our lima beans coming up to boil over here. Lima beans, where do you think they're from? Where are they from? I don't know. Lima, Ohio. Whatever. <laughs> We're like Lima, Peru. Okay. South American. I like Lima, Ohio. Now they, Native Americans had an extensive trade route and those South American beans found their way up. Really? into the United States. So in this dish, we're gonna have a lot of flavors, one of them being cumin. Now we talked about, that's an old world spice. I mean, records yeah. of cumin go way, 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 way back. From Iran, India, all over the place. You started hearing about cumin about the time some folks came into Texas, Mexico, mm -hmm. way, way back. And you started seeing cumin show up. So we're gonna have a little cumin. I love that taste. I do too. And we're gonna have a little bit of cumin in our dirty rice. If you don't like it, you don't have to do that, but we like it that way. And another very traditional thing that you use, bay leaf. Mm -hmm. Go to buy some bay leaf in the store and look at the price. Yeah. Go down south, walk around the swamp, and pick yeah, them up for free. that's true, that's true. <laughs> so we're gonna saute these for about five, six minutes till they, the onions start to just get a little tinge of brown on them, become translucent. Did you wow. see that onion fly? I did. That's a flying onion. That's a good onion. I'll throw it back. In a minute, we're going to take these. We're going to scoop this up and take this out of here because you like the one pan method, don't I you? I do. I don't like a lot of cleanup. We're going to take our already hot skillet. Maybe about half of this? Yep. Let's say about a half a pan will work nicely. Now, this is the famous pig that it was a bad pig. Nikki's hand. Bad pig. Who went to market. She tastes good, a little though. She was <laughs> She was still a pretty big pig. Yeah. But that little piggy did go to market. No, she and did. did not go wee 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 all the way home. No, she didn't. All right, so what are we gonna do here? We're gonna take, we want this to be, we don't want huge hunks in here, so we're gonna Break chop it down. that up pretty good. Now again, this recipe developed over the years. Now there have been changes. If you really wanna go back to the root, you could probably find some really old recipes. But it was mainly done with pretty rough cuts of meat. Mm -hmm. Things that nobody else really wanted to use parts of pigs, parts of chickens. And I found some chicken livers that I was gonna use for catfish bait. But you know what? It'd be perfect. Let's just put those in here. That's probably half a pound of chicken livers. Yep. Some people do not like chicken livers. I think it adds a great taste to this. So if you don't like chicken livers. Don't use them. Don't put them in. And you don't need to say, yeah, it's so gross. I think it gives it a great it flavor. It gives it a great flavor. But again, if you don't like them, we understand. Mm -hmm but you don't have to put it in. We will not come to your house and stand right beside you and give you dirty looks if you don't put chicken livers in. Nikki might, I won't. Because I'll eat it. So now as this meat is coming together, mm -hmm. start putting some seasoning in there. All right, I'm gonna put some pepper. All right. And that's probably about a teaspoon. I'm gonna put some oh. salt, probably about a half a teaspoon. Now I'm gonna come back with some cumin. So I'm gonna put probably half a tablespoon, three quarters of a tablespoon. Then I'm gonna come back with some Cajun seasoning, you know, whatever Cajun seasoning you like. We make our own. I'm gonna also take some oregano. That's smelling good. It is smelling good. The traditionalist will say bay leaves. So we gotta put some bay leaves. So don't forget to take your bay leaves out. That's right, we'll let those cook in there. Now at this point, our meat is just about done. Mm -hmm. This looks like a meal to me. The rice it is. is I mean, a whole you, meal can, by you, itself. Could, you could actually make this a meal with rice. Yeah. This is going to be our side because we got a lot of stuff going on. 
Oh, I like the cumin in there. In fact, I'm gonna put some more. Whose kitchen is it? Because it's our kitchen. We yeah. do what we want. My sister used to say, I do what I want. She still does. She still does. <laughs> and she does exactly what she wants. That's right. So at this point, we're gonna put our veggies back in. Yummy. Oh, I wish you could smell this. It's absolutely wonderful. Excited. Now, if you want, if you want more heat in it, which you probably won't. We're good. I think we're good. <laughs> I've been putting a lot of heat in it. You have been heating it up. You can put some more cayenne in here. Yeah. Now we're gonna take some chicken broth. Let's go a cup and a half. All right. Perfect. And a cup and a half of rice. And this is instant, so it's gonna go quicker. So let's actually go, not quite a cup, because that'll it's really gonna expand. Yeah. And let that cook up. I'll turn that up a little bit and let that cook down, let that rice absorb that chicken broth. Oh, we got a side. Ooh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That looks good. Now let's drain these beans. Right. So we put a little cover on our rice. Mm -hmm. We turned it down. We're going to let that come to a nice simmer. We've got our beans right here drained. We're going to put some bacon. Yummy. That's a good way to start. Nice pan. All right, now one more thing that we're going to do here just to add a little taste and depth is butter. Butter is always great. Cover that back up and let it go. One more thing I want to put in here before we get too far along is just a little bit of garlic. See how our rice is beginning to it's looking good. absorb that. Oh, can you smell that? Mm -hmm. I'm excited. That's a, To me, that's a whole meal. It is a whole meal. I think we got enough to eat on this for days. <laughs> yeah, we do. And we will. That's right. It's one good thing about it. If you fix too much, leftovers. That's right. Then we've got about four pieces of bacon here. We're going to cook that. Now, the main thing I want out of this bacon is bacon grease. We could have used bacon grease, but I want to I also want a little bit of bacon chopped up in there. All right, I got me some bacon grease now. Should I sample that bacon to make sure it's good? You probably should. I might have to. Let's cool down. Just save me a little bit to put back in a okay. dish. So here's a quiz. Where's the word succotash come from? I don't have a clue. I've already forgot. <laughs> Remember John Succo? Yeah. And his mother's nickname was Tash? Was Tash, yeah. That'll stick with me. Algonquin. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're just popping our bacon out. Then we're going to immediately put in our onions and peppers. Onions and peppers. Now I don't have to season this too much. Why? Because like the bacon has a lot of salt. That's true. Got some good smells going in here. Oh yeah. Now I didn't measure this, but that's a half red bell pepper, about a half of the yellow sweet yeah, onion. The other half of the onion. A little bit of black pepper. You cut some corn last year and froze it. Good corn. Just from right up the road, it's right. delicious. We had some frozen okra. Mm -hmm. Now a lot of people say, oh, you can't use frozen. Oh, yes you can. Yeah. Now we're gonna come back with some okra. I'd say that's about three quarters of a cup. If you don't like okra. Don't use it. Don't use it. No, we we like will not okra. force you to do that. We like okra. That's pretty. Remember Jerry Clowa, oh. mm -mm. the old Southern comedian? He tell a story about the raccoon dogs and the okra. Did he? Hilarious. Now this corn has already been blanched mm -hmm. way back. Right. So that's the last thing that we'll put in. And we're gonna come back with some lima beans. Yummy. Love from limas. Lima Ohio. That's right. Or was it Lima Peru? I like lima, Ohio. It's, it's closer. <laughs> How much lima beans did you put in there? About the same three quarters? Half to cup to three quarters? About that. Oh yeah, all We're that corn. Put our corn. Yeah. Oh, that's a good looking dish. Isn't that colorful? I like all the beautiful. Color. Yeah. That's healthy. That's all the veggies, right? Mm-hmm. Take some of that bacon, Nikki, and just cut, just tear some pieces and we'll put that in there. Okay, so we've got our wonderful deer meat here. That looks really good. Doesn't it though? Really good meat. You can tell this deer meat is very dark. I'm gonna go ahead and put some salt and pepper on here, even though I'm gonna pound it out. I'm gonna go ahead and have some seasonings on here. I'm gonna put some more stuff later. But what we're gonna do, if I can have you. Let me put them in. Let's go ahead and put one piece in the bag. This is a little way with. Not make a mess. You can keep it from going everywhere. 
I'm gonna pound that out. Now again, this is this is venison. I'm excited. I'm gonna have two receptacles of flour. One of them being just flour, and the other one is gonna be seasoned with some smoked paprika, which I'm gonna kick here lately. I really like that. I like it too. You do too, don't you? Mm -hmm. We're gonna put some garlic seasoning. Now we did a show last week, we did some frying. A lot of garlic. A lot of garlic. That was probably half a tablespoon at least. There's some onion powder, just a little bit. Let's say half a teaspoon. Some pepper. Some salt. To taste. According to your diet that you may be on or restrictions. That's gonna be our seasoned. And I really like how you did the meat in the bag. I have no mess. That's right. It didn't it go all over the kitchen. That's didn't go all over a great my idea. Shirt. Great idea, that's right. Now if you wanted to too, let's let's give it a little zing. Okay. What's the Since zing? we've got this out and about, let's go ahead and put some Cajun seasoning in here too. You like your Cajun. Oh yeah. That was a little? That was a little. Uh-huh. Hate to see a lot. Probably half a teaspoon. Now again, when you're cooking with flour like this and you're frying something, it takes quite a bit to get that flavor profile out there. <laughs> what about that much? Okay. You really do have to put quite a bit in there and you want your, you want to have plenty of flavor. Now, if you'll take that little bit of buttermilk okay. and whip those eggs up in there, Both two of eggs. Them? Yes, please. And that was probably what, a quarter cup of buttermilk? I think it was. And two eggs. Let's set this right over here. Split those two up. No seasoning, seasoning. Okay. Eggs, buttermilk. So not only does this process here thin it out, but it tenderizes it. You think about food history, you think about chicken fried steak. Mm -hmm. I love which that. Which we had a while back. Anytime you have chicken fried steak, you want some white gravy on it. Oh yeah. But when you look at this process, does it remind you of something overseas? Yes, it does. The schnitzel? Beaner schnitzel. Yes, the sn it was very good. So a lot of the things that came into this country were kind of Americanized. This is very close to that, but with more of American seasonings. Oh yeah. What a way to use your deer meat. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Now I'm gonna let my oil get up. Again, we don't do back-to-back -back shows with frying stuff. But lately. <laughs> But this just happens to be what came out of our freezer. That's right. You gotta do something with it. That's right, yes. Are we lucky mm -hmm. that we live in a state that has a good deer population? We are. Are we lucky that we have property here where we can take our own deer? And that looks wonderful. And look at that. I'm excited to try this. That is so good for you. Now we're kind of putting it in the fryer. That's okay though. But That's look right. at that. That's beautiful deer meat. If you don't have venison, you can do this with, you can do it with a skirt steak, flank steak. Right cube steak, whatever you want to use it for. All right, straight to flour. That picks up the egg. Nice and even. Then we come back with the seasoned flour. That egg holds that seasoned flour on there. And theoretically, it doesn't fall off. Yummy. Too terribly. This is one way, how do you call it, one of those gateways to getting kids to try venison. That's a good idea, yeah. Now, when it was Kelly, way back, and she didn't like venison, I made a steak. I remember you did. Backstrap. Oh, I seasoned it up just right, and I put butter on it. I said, Kelly, you want a steak? Yes, yes. So she ate it, and she wanted another one. We obliged. Mm -hmm. Now this this is not something you would want to do to everybody because Kelly's got a good sense of humor. That's right. I said, Kelly, that was deer. And she says, oh my goodness. So then guess what happened? She raided the freezer. She says, I'm a starving college student. Can I take some of that up to school in Central Michigan? And all you can do is say no. That's right. So then guess what happened? Now she loves it. All our venison disappeared. That's right. Now her husband shoots deer and she cooks it. I can't wait for her to try this. I don't think she ever had this.
going to take these, stick them in the oven. Just keep them nice and warm. All right, I think I've got about three or four tablespoons of grease here. All right. I'll go ahead and put me in. Just sprinkle it? Yeah. We're going to add some flour here. We're going to create our little own little bit gravy. of time? Yeah. Because you're the gravy queen. I'll see. Let's just do three and see how that does. A little salt. A little pepper. A little pepper. A little bit of Cajun. Yep. Give me all your little seasonings. We're going to create our own mm -hmm. gravy. Some garlic. Onion powder. Now this is half and half. And I actually had about a cup here of half and half, so I'm just going to keep adding it until we get it to the consistency we like. You think a little thinner? Just a tiny bit of sage. Do it. Just a tiny bit. Oh, yeah. I like it a lot, too. All right, mm. that's perfect. Mm. Yum. Mm. That's exactly how I remember Shirley's looking. That looks good. Doesn't that look like something you I get can't wait. in a country diner somewhere? Yes. All right, now let me tell you what I'm going to do. I like what you did to the gravy with the seasoning. Sage. I need you to help me always. That was wonderful. That was really how good. How much gravy do you want? Like a lot of gravy? Yeah, I like gravy. Like a lot of gravy? Yeah, that looks good. That was a lot of work, but you know it was worth it. Oh, it looks so good. Dig in there. I can't wait. Yes. Wow. Venison really lends itself well to this recipe. Oh, yeah. Chicken fried venison. Are you kidding me? That's one of my favorite ways to have venison now. I've never had it like that. That's so good. See if you like your succotash. Named after mm. John Succo. That's really good. I got to try the rice, too. I've been wanting to eat that. And the dirty rice, which looks dirty. Mmm. Really tasty. Delicious. Wow. When you let that sink in, the first thing you get, I taste the bay leaf, mm -hmm. but that, to me, cumin makes it. Oh, yeah. You taste that. You get just a little bit of that cayenne. Yes. That's in with the mix. Oh. And it's really meaty. You made it very meaty. I like that. Delicious taste. And... You gotta admit, the chicken livers really do something. If you don't like yeah. them, don't put them in. They're good. But the chicken livers add that nice texture, mm -hmm. that nice moist texture, right. and that earthy, lovely uh. organ meat in there. It's all good. It's all good. It's all good. Now here's the situation. Our half hour's about up. Yes. This is not gonna get any warmer sitting here. That's right. Sadly, we have to close the show. So we can eat. But if somebody runs up to you and says, this is warmer. Where am I going to get those recipes? What would you say? I say timfarmerscountrykitchen.com. I've been there. Have you? What if somebody came around up to you and says, Mrs. Farmer, <laughs> I would really like to get on your Facebook page, but I heard it's extremely hard. What do you have to do to get on there? You'd say? You hit like. Oh. Yeah, it's difficult. That's not that hard. It's difficult. <sighs> I'm about worn out. Mm -hmm. you, you cooked hard tonight. Look at our, look at our kitchen it's sink. It's a mess. You're going to clean, real kitchen you're sink. Gonna clean up tonight. Yes, I'll clean up. Uh-huh. Thanks. But i tell you what I'm going to do is I'm going to dive in on that. Mm -hmm. I could spend a lot of time right there, though. Me too. But that right there it's all is good. beautiful. It's all good. Another southern meal out of our kitchen. What will we make next week? I don't know. We still got the duck. Oh, we that's didn't, right. We didn't dive into the you duck. We need to do something with the so duck. So we better put it back in the fridge. That's right. All right, dig in, Miss Farmer. It's all about... Good times. Good friends. And really good eat. See you next week. Can't wait. We have been catering for a lot of years, and I wanted everything to have a specific taste. Therefore, I had to come up with my own products. Right. A dry rub, chow chow, and our barbecue sauce are something that we use in all our catering gigs. I developed this barbecue sauce that is not the th really thick, syrupy stuff that you get. This is, has more of a natural, it's got some pepper and onion flavor, and you can actually see the particulates in there. You know, a lot of people are asking what we use our dry rub on. Now, obviously, pork and chicken are two of the more common things. Also, we've been using on our corn on the cob with butter. That is and telling you, this That's stuff wonderful. with potatoes is fantastic. So 40 years in the making, Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen Dry Rub. Mm -hmm.